what is happening in the world of personal finance this week. All right, personal finance for gig workers. Okay, first I'm gonna cover some uh, questions uh, from viewers of the videos I put out last week. Second, what's an update on the stimulus package? Third, what is up with uh, Uber and Lyft in California? And fourth, what's a way you can make some money while you sleep? All right, gonna cover all that in a little bit more. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. Flying the colors, all right, drinking a little early morning espresso. I uh, got the wide angle lens, I got some good feedback about this. Welcome to Personal Finances with Jay Crater. This is the fifth uh, weekly episode and let's jump right in. In terms of background, what a week. Man, there's a lot happening, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. Okay, number one, questions from viewers. All right, I put out an EIDL loan video, got a lot of attention. So uh, let's look at some of the things that came up. All right, thank you, I love to see that. Uh, look at this guy, Roz Samuel, $49,500 richer. Well, you do have to pay the money back, Roz. Um, Lyft posted a statement uh, months ago, this is from Andrea Rowley, that we as Lyft drivers are qualified to apply for EIDL. So that did come up. Um, if you are a driver, can you get an EIDL? Of course. And um, will this affect your unemployment? No, okay? This is a loan. This is not you being given money. So this is a loan that you would use to, to grow your business. And um, so therefore you can still get the unemployment benefits and get the EIDL loan. That was one question that came up. Okay, and then we're gonna to go to a second page of questions here. Okay, Buddy Love. So a few of you brought this up, uh, that interest starts immediately. So yeah, what I said is the payments don't start until week number 13 but the interest starts to accrue um, right, right from when you, you get your loan, okay? Uh, but the interest rate is small, it's only 3.75%. So um, it's, it's inexpensive money. And if you have a business and you wanna grow your business and, and, you, and you feel confident that you can you know, double the size of your business with an infusion of cash, then this just makes a whole, whole lot of sense. Um, okay, then we did, uh, here's another guy, Edward. Um, I did that a couple of days ago. I was qualified for $18,000. Um, and then, hello, this is from Massey Nisa. Hello, did you get your EID alone? Thanks for your info. Okay, I'll... Okay, number two. What's the status of the stimulus package? Boy, it is just like that, that. It seems like they're coming together and then they're not. And uh, Trump jumped in with his stuff. So let's see what's going on. Um, most of us are really interested in what's happening with the unemployment. So uh, CNBC uh, published a map that shows where the states stand on the unemployment. So let me show you that right now. So this shows you uh, how your state is doing and it's kind of laid out like the country. So over here on the West Coast, right, we've got California, Oregon, and Washington. So California applied recently. Okay, so then uh, the states have to apply, then they have to be approved, and that's when the funding would start. Some states are already actually starting to pay the money out. One state, you see here uh, in the middle there, uh, South Dakota said, no, we're not gonna work with Trump. So that's interesting. Um, and you see mostly uh, grays, which means uh, no action. So a lot of states are not taking action yet, and it's gonna be interesting to see how the pressure builds on them because so many people are unemployed and they want some money and it doesn't look like anything's gonna happen anytime soon. Um, here's the next uh, little bit of news. Some Democrats are urging Pelosi, right? Who's uh, the lead Democrat in the negotiations to pass a new stimulus package, but will she listen? So what's happening is um, those folks wanna get reelected. And if their constituents are not getting money, they're not happy. And if they're not happy, they're not gonna vote for, um, for a Democrat because it looks like Nancy Pelosi is holding up everything. So, um, so they're uh, sending her letters and saying, can we please at least get the unemployment part set and the stimulus checks set 
separate from all the other stuff so that um, we can move forward. And Pelosi is saying, no, because if we do that, all that other stuff's never going to happen. So that's kind of her bargaining chip. Um, so we just got to wait and see. It doesn't look like anything's going to happen uh, anytime soon, unfortunately. Okay, number three, Uber and Lyft are still in California. So a judge ordered um, them to uh, turn all their, all their drivers into employees. And then uh, he said, N -n no, you can't, you know, you, you, were, you can appeal, but no, the answer is no. And then, it, then I actually got uh, an email from Lyft that said um, they were shutting down, right? That they were going to be shutting down. And then, uh, legally, something happened where they got a reprieve. So they're both staying in California for the time being, and they're putting a lot of their future based on Proposition 22 here in California. So Uber and Lyft have poured millions of dollars into a November ballot measure to keep California drivers paid as independent contractors. And even if you're not in California, this is interesting because the same kind of thing may happen in your state. So then I went to Politico, and uh, got a little more information here. So let me just read this to you. Potential impact of Prop 22. App-based gig companies like Uber and DoorDash would be able to continue treating their drivers and delivery people as independent contractors, not employees. That would uh, preserve their business models, which rely on fleet of independent contractors to set their own hours, but are not entitled to the same wage and benefit guarantees as employees. Companies would guarantee workers a minimum wage based on driving time, that's not much, uh, health insurance stipend, that's also not much, and some compensation, compensation for on-the-job injuries, but they would avoid costly legal mandates. So unlike employees, we still would not have state minimum wage, we would still not have paid sick leave, and real important, we would not have unemployment insurance, which applies to every other California employee. Um, the initiative would also close off a potential path to unionization given that federal law reserves collective bargaining for employees. And that's really important. So that means we as a group of drivers uh, can get treated like crap by Uber and Lyft, and there's nothing we can do about it. And we've seen that over the last four years. I've seen my pay cut go down and down and down and down. We can't rise up together and say, you know, we're going to go on strike, right? That's the typical action of a group of people who are not happy with their conditions. We can't do that. And when this proposition, if it were to pass, that would eliminate that option altogether. And we would just be at the full effect um, of whatever Uber and Lyft wanted to do. Okay, number four, how can you make money while you sleep? Well, if you have some extra space in your house that you're not using, there's a company that we featured in the past called Neighbor, and they allow you to just rent out your space, right? So as you can see on their homepage, store your stuff with a neighbor, right? And then in the upper right-hand corner, it says, list your space. See, I put that up there in red so you can see that. And then I just put in my zip code to see what it would find. And you can see uh, in Roseville, somebody's got an unpaved lot, just the land sitting there that you can rent for $35 and maybe park it uh, like a, uh, a motorhome there, right? Here's a garage for $25 a month. Uh, what else we got here? $91 for a garage, a driveway for $37.50 a month, a, a self-storage unit for $75 a month. So these are rates that are cheaper than you would normally get them at a commercial facility. Um, so if you have some space, um, just go to neighbor.com and uh, take a look. All right, key takeaways. Let me give you some updates. So my 26 weeks of unemployment came to an end. Um, at the beginning of this month. And I was like, what do, I, what do I have to do? And then I got something in the mail that said there was nothing to do, um, just sit tight, you would be extended those 13 weeks. But you know, you don't really know till there's money in your bank account. But sure enough, um, the next time it came to certify my weeks, I certified my weeks, and um, I was able to get my 450 a week for those uh, two weeks. So hopefully, um, in California, they've applied for the, um, the unemployment and that retroactive $400 a week will start to kick in um, sometime in the next couple of weeks. We'll see. But the good news is I went from 26 weeks to 39 weeks. So that's the update. Um, bottom line, 
have options. Give yourself some options. Uh, a lot of things are going on and it's important that you have options because we're all kind of on unsteady footing right now, um, hoping that things work this way or that way. And it's just that's kind of a crazy year, 2020. So keep your options open. Keep giving yourself more options, all right? That's, that's my key takeaway after this wild, wild ride of a week. All right, everybody, it's Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guy. Thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up. That helps more people to see it. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, subscribe, set yourself up for notifications, get, get all the videos that we put out, and stay informed and stay on top of what's happening in the gig economy. You'll go ahead and have a great day. Be safe out there.